All right, hello and welcome. In this problem, we discover how different inflation regimes, uh, and by inflation regime, we mean uh, different politicians, like their varying appetite for inflation, so high or low, um, how this might affect the rest of the economy. And then by the rest of the economy, we refer to unemployment and realized inflation. So this problem, we're going to be given just a basic Phillips curve. Uh, we assume adaptive expectations, and then we have two different inflation regimes, one a high inflation regime and one a low inflation regime, and we see whether or not a political business cycle is generated. Um, and in the end, you'll find out that uh, given tweaks to our assumption and tweaks to how the political system works, um, how these things might result in changes to, the real, to real economic variables like inflation and unemployment. And then this problem is borrowed from uh, Mankiw's Macroeconomics, Chapter 18, um, Problem 1. Uh, chapter 18 in the edition that I have is Alternative Perspectives on Stabilization, Stabilization Policy, so you might have a different edition. So in this question, uh, we're asked the following. Suppose that the trade-off between unemployment and inflation is derived by the following Phillips curve. So we, here we have current unemployment is equal to the natural rate of unemployment minus um, some scalar in front of the difference between actual realized inflation and expected inflation. So again, where U denotes the unemployment rate, U to the N uh, designates the natural rate of unemployment, pi is the inflation rate, and E pi is the expected rate of inflation. So in addition, we're going to have uh, these two assumptions here. So in addition, um, Suppose that the left party follows a policy of high money growth and the right poly party follows a policy of low money growth. What political business cycle pattern of inflation and unemployment would you predict under the following conditions? So just to kind of set this up, we're going to have this uh, Republican inflation. Um, and public inflation implies low inflation. So that's actually the right party. Uh, and then Democratic Party. So this is left party. Inflation uh, is this pi sub d implying high inflation. Um, so, so the first condition is this. Every four years, one of the parties takes control based on a random flip of coin. Um, and then there's a hint, what will expected inflation be prior to the election? So the way I read this, there's kind of two possibilities of how this might work. Uh, I'll do the... So the first one would be when people win the election, um, you know, they're not put into power until a little bit after that. So people get to update their expected inflation based on who they observe having won the election. So in this case, for example, uh, the Republicans win, then people update their inflation expectations, that E pi, to reflect the new lower inflation, E sub r. So what would that look like? That would mean that expected inflation is equal to that Republican inflation rate, which is going to be the actual realized inflation rate. And so when we plug that into our Phillips curve equation here, we have realized inflation is going to be that Republican inflation because they were put in power. And then expected inflation is going to be equal to um, the Republican inflation because when people were setting up their expectations as to inflation, they knew the Republicans won. So that's exactly what they set it to. And so uh, if the Republican inflation minus Republican inflation, you know, expectations fall exactly in line with realized inflation, so the inflation that people actually saw in the economy falls in line exactly with what their expectations were. So this whole term goes to zero, and we find that the unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, and then, you know, you could kind of walk through a similar thought experiment. Um, so the, let's say the left party wins. That means uh, people's expected inflation are going to be exactly in line with the Democrat inflation rate. So expectations are equal to the Democratic inflation, equal to the realized inflation. Same, same process, you find that the observed unemployment, you know, the actual unemployment, is going to be equal to the natural rate. So in that particular setup, we find that there's no political business cycle. A business cycle would be um, where, given you know, different parties in power, unemployment's either above or below this natural rate. In this particular setup, um, the unemployment rate is always this natural rate of unemployment. However, uh, I suppose there's a different way you could have interpreted part A here. So every four years, one of the parties takes control. Suppose it's the following. Um, so suppose that people's expected inflation um, doesn't get to be updated once they find out who the victor of the election is. So suppose that, you know, this is a coin toss, so it's a 50-50 chance of either the left party or the right party winning. Um, so when they set their expectations for inflation, 
they have to have a 50% chance the Republicans might win and a 50% chance that the Democrats might win. So when they're setting those inflation expectations, they're thinking, well, you know, it might be this or it might be this, uh, and it's a 50-50 chance of either. So their expected inflation is going to be somewhere between the two inflation rates. Remember, uh, uh, pi sub r is the low inflation regime, and uh, pi sub d, you know, like the left winning, uh, is going to be the high inflation regime. So what what happens in that particular situation? Well, let's just kind of go through the math here. If Republicans win, you know, we have the same Phillips curve here. So realized inflation, if the Republicans win, is going to be exactly that. It's going to be the Republican inflation. And remember, expected, expected inflation was equal to this 50-50 chance of either one. So we plug that in. Um, solving that line, you know, you have uh, pi sub r minus half, 50%, 0.5 pi sub r. So that leaves to 0.5 pi sub r. And then uh, minus 0.5 pi sub d. Since we know that the Republican inflation rate is less than the Democratic inflation rate, we know that this term right here is going to be less than zero because it's a smaller number minus a larger number. It's going to be less than zero. So, so when we plug that fact into our Phillips curve, we know this is going to be a negative number. So it's going to be a negative times a negative number. So this is going to be work, work out to be a positive number. So current unemployment is going to be equal to um, the natural rate of unemployment plus some positive number. So if the, Demo if the Republicans win or the right party wins, we know that the observed unemployment is going to be above the natural rate of unemployment. So um, what is that going to look like? What, what, what happens if uh, the Democrats win or the left party wins? Well, the inflation expectations are exact exactly the same, right? Expect inflation is equal to, you know, the chance that Republicans are going to win plus the chance that Democrats are going to win given their inflation. So when you plug that in, given a Democratic win, a left party win, um, that means the unemployment rate is going to be equal to the natural rate of unemployment minus that alpha scalar. The Democratic Democrats win, so they get that realized inflation, and then minus this expected inflation term. Um, when you simplify all this, you get half of that higher Democratic inflation minus half of the Republican inflation. Since the Democratic inflation rate is above the Republican inflation rate, we know that this term, all that this term inside there is going to be a positive number. So you're going to have a negative sign times a positive sign. So this whole term is going to be a negative sign. So realized unemployment is going to be the natural rate of unemployment minus something. So that means the realized unemployment is going to be less than the natural rate of unemployment. So you, you kind of have this weird con conclusion. Um, if the Democrats win, if the left party wins over here, you have higher inflation because the realized inflation is this Democratic inflation. Uh, and then you have unemployment below the natural rate. So you have low unemployment. If the right party wins, you have low inflation, because the Republican inflation is the one that's realized, and then you have unemployment that's above the natural rate. So what's all that imply? That implies a political business cycle. Based on who wins the election, uh, you have different economic outputs, outcomes. And so I'm pretty sure this kind of second part is what this problem was getting at. Uh, let's move on to part B. So part B says uh, the two parties just take turns, right? So it's one one term, it's going to be a Republican um, uh, term, Republicans are elected to office, and then the next one, the liberal or the left or the Democrats go to office. So in this case, you know, when we're given adaptive expectations, um, sorry, not given adaptive expectations, just given that uh, people set the their expected inflation equal to what they think is going to happen. In this case, they know exactly what's going to happen. The right party is going to win, and they're going to set their inflation rate to this pi sub r, the low inflation rate. Uh, so we know that if their expectations are going to be set uh, equal to what the Republicans promised that they would set it to, and we know that realized inflation, just pi there, is going to be equal to the Republican inflation rate, the lower inflation rate. So when we plug that into our Phillips curve, what do we get? We get that the unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate of unemployment plus, or sorry, minus this little term here. Uh, realized inflation is going to be equal to that lower Republican inflation rate, and then expected inflation, we already knew that, um, they, because the people expected 
inflation to be that lower Republican inflation rate because they knew what was going to happen. You know, these parties are taking turns. This whole term goes to zero, which means this whole term goes to zero, and means that the unemployment rate is going to be exactly equal to the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, and coincidentally, uh, with the left party taking power, you have the exact same thing, only with, um, oops, long subscripts here, with um, the higher um, pi sub d rate, you know, with the, the liberals taking control. Um, and once again, you have the natural rate of unemployment. The unemployment rate is exactly equal to the natural rate of unemployment. So in this particular setup, we find no business cycles at all. Uh, and let's move on to part C. So C asks, uh, do your answers above support the conclusions of a monetary that monetary policy should be set by an independent central bank? So let's kind of quickly review what our conclusions were. From uh, part A, we found the following. We found that uh, when inflation is set by political parties uh, that are determined by you know simple winner of a coin toss, uh, inflation was unstable. You know, it jumps between the Republican lower rate and the Democratic higher rate, depending on who wins the election. Uh, unemployment was also unstable because it jumps between, jumps above and below the natural rate, depending on who won the election. In our second political system, where inflation was set by uh, just political parties taking turns, uh, inflation was unstable again because it was jumping between uh, the higher and the lower inflation rates, depending on who won the election. But uh, unemployment was stable. Um, because it, it was consistently the natural rate because uh, inflation expectations were allowed to be kept in line with what they actually ended up. So unemployment found out to be stable, but inflation was not stable. So let's think hypothetically, uh, what about an independent central bank? So it, it, at the very least, it's theoretically possible for a central bank to set inflation that's uh, at some kind of stable, consistent level that's perhaps some kind of compromise between the two. I think I misspelled compromise there. Which would then uh, also imply, you know, assuming that uh, expected inflation fall, fell in line with realized inflation, that would imply that, uh, you know, given our Phillips curve, that would then imply that unemployment was also similarly stable. So if your goal was, you know, stable unemployment and stable inflation, and uh, and if you have stable inflation where ex realized inflation falls exactly in line with uh, expected inflation, that leads into our Phillips curve where unemployment is stable and exactly equal to the natural rate. Um, if those things are your goals, you know, stable inflation and uh, unemployment that's stable and equal to the natural rate, then this, an independent central bank, at least hypothetically or theoretically, could achieve those goals. Oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, hopefully this was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions. Bye.